Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Velas here in San Diego, California, with Mr. Joe Markovsky. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. How are you? Very well, very well. Um, my first time interviewing yourself, so I know I've met you before, but I said nice to meet you and thank you for giving me some of your time. Um, we just had the Canelo press conference, an insane media turnout, as expected, and um, a kind of a press conference that felt like an event which everything surrounding Canelo does because it just showed what a star he is. Yeah, and he's a huge star, he's a transcendent star, and that's why he commands the, the money he does, it's why he uh, moves the, the numbers he does. Um, so look, yeah, it's, it's fantastic to be back in the Canelo Alvarez business. We've obviously been working with him uh, mostly on, but for, uh, uh, slightly off for the last four years, um, and it's great to be back in a, in a two-fight deal with Canelo Alvarez. Uh, looking forward to closing out the rest of this year with him. Obviously, at the press conference, you said your piece, your sort of, I'll call it your formal piece. Now you're on IFL TV, we'll take it a bit less formal. As a boxing fan, mm. I don't know, wax recoil with Canelo Alvarez, because I know that you'll be a big fan, because everyone is. Yeah, look, he's a, Eddie, Eddie's, I think, the biggest fan there is of Canelo Alvarez, right? And I think he's, he, he admits that. Um, Canelo Alvarez is a really impressive human being. Um, charming, like, nice guy when you, when, you, when you brief him away from boxing. And then obviously you, you realise what kind of fighter he is. Um, what, I, think the, the thing that amazes me most about him, he's making so much money as a guy. He could choose a really easy path for the next five years, make a bunch of money um, and sort of have a very well, relatively easy life. He clearly isn't going to judge his own sort of success by financial measures. He wants to go and um, you know, make history, set a legacy, he wants to do it across multiple weight divisions. Uh, as a sports fan, you have to respect anyone chasing greatness. And I think Canelo Alvarez, of any current athlete on the planet, is, is up there at the very top in terms of um, the challenges, sporting challenges he's setting himself. And I just, as a sports fan, as a boxing fan, um, you have to respect that. I asked this to Eddie Reynoso and he kind of, I think he shunned it a little bit because he didn't like the word Mayweather in the question. But I remember when people always said that Mayweather change the sport financially because of the money in sort of the late 90s, early 2000s, money made for a reason. Do you feel like, not just because of this deal, but deals previous with Can Canelo Alvarez, ones involving such financials, this can change the sport again for the next decade or two de decades, not just for Canelo, but for the sport as a whole, perhaps people further down the food chain even. I think there's always going to be money for the top, top fighters. What I'd like to see happen, this is where we work very closely with Matchman and push our promotional partners and actually push our own business. Um, these kind of transcendent fighters don't come around every day of the week. They have to be worked with by the broadcast and promoters to be introduced to a broader audience. These guys, not, not the money they get paid, but the, the, the level of stardom they have can take the sport into new waters. And I think it's so important, especially for the younger generation. This is why Ryan Garcia is such an interesting prospect as well. Fighters that can take uh, boxing into new audiences, into new communities, outside the four walls of the super hardcore fans, um, that's really important for the health of the sport. And I think Canelo, ignoring the numbers, ignoring how much money he'll make, uh, he has the ability to do that. He does that very, very well. Uh, and that's why we as a brand love working with him because he brings more people to our brand. He obviously, you all know the numbers better than anyone else. And just in terms, not exact numbers or whatever, but just in terms of social media, subscribers and whatnot, um, how far ahead is Canelo Alvarez from his next competitor at the zone? Um, there's different metrics, right? There's, ultimately, it's about how many people tune in to watch the fight. And Canelo Alvarez in the US is at the top of that tree um, by a fair distance. Um, not, I wouldn't say like miles and miles and miles, but a fair distance. AJ in the UK clearly has uh, that same sort of drawing power. I think Ryan Garcia on social media is, you know, a, a leader there because of his age and where he's come from and what he's invested in, in his time and his resources there. Um, yeah, but Canelo Alvarez is commercially, if you look at it more broadly, by, by a fair way, the most uh, sought after US boxer for sure. Is that why it was so important for DAZN to land this signature? Yeah, for sure. And look, it's, 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 it's massive for us. I think Canelo and DAZN are two brands that are sort of synonymous with each other over the last three or four years. Um, people expected his last fight to be on the zone. Uh, it wasn't. We're right back in the Canelo Alvarez business, and that's great. Um, 
yeah, for us, it, it's not rocket science, right? He brings numbers, and when those numbers come, they stay and they watch other content. So uh, there's a, there's an on the night value, and then there's an, a post fight value as well for us, uh, and it's really important for us to be there. And that's why we, you know, in a competitive process, um, end up, you know, investing in Canelo. We're very, by the way, confident in the investment we've made, and we're very confident that that money is going to be, um, you know, well invested. See, I don't want to get too technical, but I think a lot of people saw the figure and just went, wow, they've gone, let's put a massive figure and see if Canelo signs. Obviously, there's a lot more intricacies. Can you go into detail, if possible, about what the intricacies are behind why that figure is... is well, I don't know what figure you're talking about because I, 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 we've not put any numbers out. I think there's lots I'm of... Going, yeah, I'm going off press figures. So, but... yeah, I don't know, and there's been a load of numbers thrown around, right? Um, the, the process by which we go through is... It's probably quite dull. It's a bunch of spreadsheets and a bunch of uh, accountants and strategy people. And I'm sure your audience will uh, roll their eyes at all of that corporate chat. Um, but it's a very scientific process. We know our audience, right? We know how they behave. We know uh, how people who've been designed subscribers who are not currently designed subscribers. So you don't just put a big number in a calculator like a no, lot of people think. It's thinking. a slightly more scientific process than that. Um, Shout out to Jared Cass, our strategy guy. He'll, he'll be watching this and he'll enjoy that. He, he and his team do a bunch of work um, to, you know, to give us a view of, of how much these rights are worth. And then our, you know, the team that, that deal with Canelo and Matchroom, you know, think about the best way to position that to Canelo. And um, ultimately, in this instance, we've got a deal done, which is something we're very excited about. Obviously, it begins with uh, Dimitri Bivol on May the seventh in Las Vegas. I just sort of want to. I don't want to sound disrespectful, say brush past that, but I look at the Golovkin fight and I know Eddie called it the most marketable um, fight in boxing worldwide. Um, I suppose this is, like I said, I don't want to sound disrespectful, this is really the big one of the two, isn't it? Because the trilogy there, um, again, from a numbers perspective and, and what that will do for the zone is, um, is absolutely huge. If it happens, yeah, for sure. Um, it's got the ch best chance of happening Look, ever since the zone got into the US boxing business, the Canelo Triple G trilogy has been kicked around our business as something we'd love to deliver. We're, we're the closest we've ever been to it happening, but let's not disrespect Dimitri Bivol. Let's not dis disrespect Rio Tomorata on April 9th in Japan. Triple G's got to come through that. And if that happens, then we've got a fantastic, uh, you know, match up at the, at the back end of the year, back end of the summer, sorry. Um, but I think all focus for Canelo, all focus for uh, Bivol, all focus for everyone involved, broadcasters, promoters, etc. needs to be on May the 7th because if we take our eye off that, you know, boxing's got a funny way of biting in the arse and we don't want to be, you know, losing our way on that. We're focused on May the 7th. Yeah. And obviously pay-per-view um, in the US, I said this to Eddie earlier, it's one of them that it's always going to bite you in the arse when you're so transparent with media. Um, when you say certain things about uh, pay-per-view and perhaps the future of pay-per-view mm. when you give a pay-per-view show on a platform that you endorse um, yeah it's going to bite you in the arse but is it sort of it, it makes sense I suppose when he's just done 800,000 buyers or, or near that on Showtime that on the zone this is a pay-per-view fight with yeah, look, I mean, we're not shirking away from the fact that we were quite vocal against pay-per-view when we came to the market um, there's a few reasons for that at the time we genuinely believed we wouldn't do it uh, we also had to make tongue-in-cheek sort of marketing campaigns to capture attention, right? Um, but, but we are honest in our positioning there that at the time we didn't feel pay-per-view functionality or the platform was necessary uh, to make our business work. Ultimately, was this 20... Sorry, I just want to get the dates wrong. Was this 2018, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah when we launched in the US in 2018. Um, look, the market's changed, our business has changed. Ultimately, there are a couple of fighters, a, few, a handful of fighters worldwide who are established pay-per-view stars in their domestic markets. Canelo Alvarez in, in the North American market, um, Anthony Joshua in the UK. To be competitive uh, as a broadcaster in these rights conversations uh, against our competitors, the Sky Sports, the Showtimes, the, the PBCs of the world, uh, we need to be, um, frankly, we need a pay-per-view platform. If we didn't have one, we wouldn't be able to get our hands on the content. If we didn't get our hands on the content, we can't serve fight fans in the way that we want to. So. Uh, we'll, we'll own the fact that this is a change of position from our, our perspective. Ultimately, it's a conversation about value to consumers. And I'm very happy to, I'm, I think it's hard to challenge the zone as the best value proposition in the US market. We're establishing ourselves in the UK. I think our value pay in the UK, we were at 199 for a long time in the UK. We're now at 799 monthly 
um, you know, I think we are we can remain confident in our position as the best value market, highest volume of fights, highest quality of fights consistently. We're serving boxing fans. Um, obviously, we're, we're slightly biased, but we're serving boxing fans, I think, in a very, very uh, generous and full way. Um, and that's going to continue. Um, we just need to have this functionality in this platform to be able to operate uh, in, around certain fights. The key point is, unlike some of our competitors, we're going to use it sparingly. We're not going to overuse pay-per-view. We're not going to get greedy with it. We're going to be using it for the fights we need to. And we're going to be uh, focused on maintaining and growing the value of the subscription. Look at the month of April in the US. Uh, Ryan Garcia has returned to the ring on April the 9th. Taylor Ryan on April the 30th. There is absolutely other broadcasters in this market who put any Ryan Garcia fight on a pay-per-view. That's a DAZN subscription fight. It's part of your core subscription. Um, so the value and maintaining the value of the subscription is going to remain central to our, our business plan and our strategy. From the UK perspective, what does it take for a Canelo Alvarez fight to, to be pay-per-view? Is it if he is to fight uh, a Brit? I mean, I know we've had him... Um, fight non-Brits on non-pay-per-view events before, but is it does it take him to fight a Brit for potentially the third fight to be a pay-per-view in, in, in the UK? Yeah. I think that every fight's got different ingredients, right? Uh, well, am, I, am, I, am I presuming that in the UK the Gennady Golovkin fight is not pay-per-view either? The Canelo Triple G fight, yeah. if it happens, it, happens yeah. it won't be a pay-per-view in the UK. Um, so then what does it take for the third Canelo fight to be pay-per-view in the UK, or is it just written off it will... 99.9% percent not. There is no third kind of fight from, from our perspective organised right now. If that happens, oh, yeah. that, you know, um, let's wait and see. Um, I, I think on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, we'll assess when and how to use pay-per-view. I think there, as I say, a handful of fighters and a handful of fights, uh, a small number that will be on pay-per-view. The US and UK pay-per-view market and, and the landscape is very, very different as well. And we're not blind to that, obviously. Um, I think we'll use it sparingly, as I said. Uh, and I think, you know, I don't think there's any point getting into hypotheticals because I think it's such a case-by-case -case, uh, situation. Canelo Alvarez, if we want to be competitive for his rights, he's a pay-per-view fighter. And that's how, uh, ultimately, we need, to, we need to think about him now.